Hello, everybody. This is Rob Swatsky from the York Campus of Hack. In this podcast, we'll be reviewing the coronary circulation. Now we know how the body's tissues and organs receive their oxygen and nutrients and dump off their carbon dioxide and waste. But how does the heart, in particular the myocardium, receive all the essentials it needs to properly function? How does it eliminate its wastes? The heart cannot absorb nutrients from the blood being pumped through it. The diffusion rates are too slow in order for it to supply all of its tissues. Delivering gases and nutrients to the tissues of the heart wall is the job of the coronary circulation, also called the cardiac circulation, the heart's own circulation system, which is a branch of the systemic circulation. The name coronary means crown, and it's a reference to how the coronary arteries, which branch off the ascending aorta, wrap around the top of the heart like a crown sitting on a person's head. Oxygenated blood flows into the right and left coronary arteries when the heart relaxes. The openings into the coronary arteries are squeezed closed during the heart's contraction. The blood in the aorta is under very high pressure, and it is this high pressure that carries the blood into the coronary circulation, beginning with the coronary arteries, then the capillaries, and finally the coronary veins. Let's review the coronary circulation beginning with the coronary arteries. The left coronary artery is just inferior to the left auricle and splits into two branches the anterior interventricular branch and the circumflex branch. The anterior interventricular branch, also called the left anterior descending or LAD artery, runs along the anterior interventricular sulcus and delivers oxygenated blood to both the right and left ventricle walls. The LAD's other nickname is the Widowmaker because of its unfortunate propensity to become blocked, which leads to a myocardial infarction or a heart attack because this artery is supplying the left ventricle, which is pumping blood through the systemic arteries to the rest of the body. The circumflex branch runs along the coronary sulcus and delivers blood to the left ventricle and the left atrium walls. The right coronary artery branches to the right side of the heart and delivers blood to the wall of the right atrium. It runs inferior to the right auricle and divides into the marginal branch and along the posterior surface of the heart the posterior interventricular branch. In this diagram, the wall of the heart is transparent. So the dark red color is showing the anterior coronary arteries, while the light red color is showing the posterior coronary arteries located on the back or posterior surface of the heart as we're looking through this transparent wall at the posterior interventricular branch. The posterior interventricular branch runs along the posterior interventricular sulcus and delivers blood to the walls of the right and the left ventricles on the posterior side. The marginal branch is located at the right margin of the heart and delivers blood to the wall of the right ventricle. There are many connections between coronary arteries that supply oxygenated blood to the same region in the heart's myocardium. These connections are called anastomoses and act like bypasses or detours, also known as collateral circulation, for blood to be delivered to a particular area if one area is blocked in any way. The coronary arteries are narrow vessels and located on the surface of the heart, so they are more prone to blockage than other vessels. 
The anastomoses allow the heart to still maintain its functions if blockages, partial or complete, occur in one or more coronary arteries up to a point. If the coronary arteries do become blocked, the heart's blood supply will be reduced, which leads to oxygen deprivation of cardiac muscle fibers. If the blockage continues for many years, it may cause a heart attack, also called a myocardial infarction. In the coronary circulation, the oxygenated blood leaves the coronary arteries and moves into the capillaries, where oxygen and nutrient exchange occur with the myocardial tissues. Carbon dioxide and wastes are picked up by the bloodstream, and this deoxygenated blood is then carried into the coronary veins. The major coronary veins in the circulation include the great cardiac vein, found in the anterior interventricular sulcus. It drains blood from the walls of the left atrium and the right and left ventricles. The small cardiac vein, located in the coronary sulcus, again here on the anterior surface of the heart, it's draining the right atrium and the right ventricle. Also on the anterior surface, the anterior cardiac vein, which drains the right ventricle. Looking through this see-through heart wall to the posterior surface of the heart, we see the middle cardiac vein found in the posterior interventricular sulcus, which drains the right and left ventricles. This deoxygenated blood collected by the coronary veins makes its way to the posterior surface of the heart into the coronary sinus, a large, thin-walled vein found in the coronary sulcus. The coronary sinus can expand in diameter as it receives blood because it doesn't have any smooth muscle in its walls. After collecting blood from the coronary veins, the coronary sinus drains this blood into the right atrium. The coronary sinus is also a great landmark for the posterior surface of the heart. Here we see another view of the coronary sinus and its very distinct larger diameter really stands out running along the coronary sulcus. And here we also see the middle cardiac vein that leads into the posterior coronary sinus.